Hi. In this complex example, we're going to use coding to actually take data that's not coming from Salesforce records and convert that into data that PDF Butter can actually use. The data can come from maybe a field that stores some uh, JSON or it can come from a request that you do to a backend system. Uh, all of that can be done in real time. But here we, uh, we assume that we already have the data. So for these demo purposes, I have hard coded the data directly into my actionable. In this case, I'm going to create a before actionable. If you want to get more information on before actionables, just go to our uh, uh, our uh, academy type API. And for instance, you can say here, I'm going to take a look at the uh, Apex API from PDF Butler. And then that is the uh, before actionable with an example and everything uh, explained. So in the before actionable will be run before the PDF Butler configuration is actually uh, called. So this means that you can actually change data, prepare data before calling PDF Butter. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we're going to assume that you're going to create or get some data from an external system, or maybe it's stored into Salesforce. I let you choose that uh, use case. Here, I'm going to say, I'm going to get some data. I'm going to get some information coming from, uh, uh, and I, coming from a system, and it returns some JSON. The JSON, I want to be structured like this, but in the end document, I want it to be structured like this. I wanted to say day, night, weekend. So that's uh, the three options that we have. You see that it is day and night, that is day, night, weekend, and then all of the months that uh, in the rows. So we call that the column repeater. Uh, this is a complex column repeater because I'm going to repeat columns. We don't know how many day, nights items that we have. Uh, and also, we're going to replicate rows in this configuration, in this setup. So if you want to learn more about the column repeater, that's another uh, uh, topic. Um, but And you can get more information from the academy or via our uh, support, uh, customer success team. But here, we're going to focus on preparing the data. So we're going to prepare the data. And we're going to take this data. And we're going to transform it into two data sources. A data source for the columns and a data source for the rows. First, call the data source for the column will say, I'm going to create a, a field called when, and then I'm going to add uh, all of the options that are there for the, uh, um, yeah, for, the, uh, for the information here, so the columns that I want. And then there's going to be a data source for the rows. That means that we have to restructure this information and say, well, the value for uh, January, yeah, that's the, uh, the the row January that I want to put here. There's going to be a value for um, day, and day is going to be mapped to the column name value. Night is going to be mapped to the column name value underscore one, and weekend is going to be mapped to the uh, column name value underscore two. So what we're going to have here for January is obviously there's going to be no uh, column. Uh, there's not, go not going to be any weekend. So we're going to not have anything in this column. The column might not even exist. It doesn't really matter in this row. So let's see how we do that in this setup in the config, uh, in the, uh, the Apex class. First step is we're going to, uh, of course, create some maps because we're going to get information on the periods, the months that we are going to do. Uh, uh, and then we're going to create our uh, records, our uh, yeah, list of records. A record in PDF Butter Actionables is seen as a map. So when you see a map, that's one record. And a list of maps is actually a list of records. So a map will have uh, a, a, a multiple fields. Fields might be identified by the field name and the value. So that's how we see a map as a key value store. And a list of maps is, of course, multiple records that belong together. Cool. Let's uh, run through this. And let's. I'm not going to teach you how to run through uh, JSON. Uh, I actually did not read this. My, uh, I did not write this myself. My colleagues did this for me. I'm just going to explain what the system does. It's going to loop through the JSON. And at a certain moment, it's going to see that there is something called uh, day or night. At this moment, it will actually say I'm on level 3. And I'm going to create a record row, as you can see here. 
uh, and the record row will add a field when to it. So that's the field that we're gonna add here. And the value is gonna be the value that it currently uh, will sit in. So that's the current period. That's the value we're gonna get here from the text in the JSON. So that's in this case is gonna be day and the second time is gonna be night. Okay, so I'm gonna add this value here. I'm gonna uh, add this value also to my uh, uh, my data list. Huh? That's what uh, the, the variable that you have here. So that's the uh, the list of records that we're gonna use because this is what we need to pass on to PDF Butter because PDF Butter needs a list of records. Okay, so we're gonna add this here and then uh, we're gonna do something very special, but that's because of the uh, uh, the column repeater that we're gonna do. I said this is a very complex example. In the column repeater, we need to uh, transfer the information from this over into one record. So here we have January and then an object called day and an object I, uh, an object with day and, an, and night, but we need to put this into one record that we uh, that we can use like this. So how does it know that this value 10 belongs to day? That's because of the name of the header that is concatenated with, uh, with a certain suffix. For uh, the first value, this, there is going to be no suffix. The second value is going to have a suffix underscore one. The third value is going to have a suffix underscore two, and so on and so on. Of course, we're not going to always try to find back these suffixes. What we're going to do is we're going to be smart and we're going to put these suffixes in a map because then we can easily uh, find these suffixes back. So the current uh, period, that's going to be day, for instance, that's the uh, the first one, and the first one that we find, we're gonna say no suffix. So when the counter is zero, no suffix, and afterwards we're gonna update the counter. So the next time it comes in this in this code, it will say, okay, the counter is more than one, so I'm gonna put in a certain suffix, and what's gonna be the suffix? The suffix is actually gonna be the current period underscore. Uh, sorry, the 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 the, uh, the map is going to be the key, the current period, and then underscore, and then the uh, uh, the counter. So it will nicely say underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, and so on and so on. Um, the level that this uh, uh, counter is defined is important because uh, they are it's top level. Uh, so we're going to keep counting every time again and again. Now. Next up, we have our suffixes. We now know that we uh, uh, that uh, that we have some periods defined, and then we're gonna say in that same parsing of the JSON again. This is not a uh, course on parsing JSON, but uh, on just how to uh, organize and structure the data. Here you can, for instance, say, well, we have some periods, and again, that's a record row. So. A row is a map of a key value. That's what we said before. Uh, and in this row, we're first going to check, of course, if we already have a row for that current period. And the current period is going to be the month. So what we're going to build here is, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to start obviously looping through this information. In the first step, it's going to say January. Uh, uh, then it's going to keep looping and then it's going to find day, then it's going to find night. And every time it has to add values over here. But it doesn't have to create new records in our, uh, in, in, in our list because the record of January already exists. Uh, a map is a record. So when we have these uh, records, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to add it to the uh, um, to the period value values map, and if it already exists, obviously we're going to use that one. And otherwise, we're going to create. Uh, here it says if it does not exist, we're going to create a new map. We're going to uh, uh, put it into the periods list. We're going to add it to the rows list. Uh, the rows list is what we're going to uh, push back into PDF Butler, and then we're going to add fields here. We're going to add a field for the month. Uh, so that's the uh, uh, that's the first field that we're going to add here, and then we're going to also add field, fields for the values. So how does it know now which suffix to use? That's why we have created this um, suffixes map, and in this suffixes map, as you can see here, 
we have a current, uh, we're gonna check on this current period. Well, if it's already there, we're gonna add something. So if it's the first month, uh, uh, sorry, the first period, that's gonna be day, it's gonna add nothing. When it's not the first period, for instance, uh, uh, night, then it's gonna add underscore one. Yeah? So the suffix here is uh, what we have said earlier. That's nothing. This one is underscore one. And this one is underscore two. So that suffix is going to uh, be added here. And then we're going to add the text as well. Looping through this uh, uh, JSON, we now have all the information. How do we pass it on to PDF Butter? Well, that's the second thing. We need data sources in PDF Butter. So we're going to create two data sources, one data source for the columns and one data source for the rows. These data sources are going to be of type key value and we want to push multiple uh, records, so it's going to be a list of objects. There's going to be no data in here. If it's key value, it's uh, expected uh, to, uh, um, to be populated via Apex. So uh, what we're going to need in the Apex is a unique identifier that uh, identifies this data source on all environments, meaning that if you set it up on a, uh, on a sandbox and then you want to push it to props, this identifier will always be the same. So this identifier we can just hard code into our Apex, and then we're going to say, get us these two uh, data sources. And then, of course, we're going to add these data sources into PDF Butler to take into account. Doing that just means that you have to put into it into an input map. The input map will be the uh, an input variable into the uh, uh, actionable, as you can see right here. And then you're going to have to say the DS map. Uh, so that's the uh, map of the data sources. We're going to take the ID. So eventually, the key of this input map is going to be this one over here, the ID of this uh, data source. And then we're going to add our column list, our row list, and then we have all the data that we actually need in our doc config. So um, to run this uh, actionable, we're going to also have to add an actionable on our uh, doc config or in the pack, yeah? depends on where, how you went, you want to run it. So in this actionable, we're, uh, this is going to be a run class uh, record type. And we're just going to say, this is the class to run, when to run it before. So before we're going to uh, create the, uh, uh, the doc config, it's going to be active, obviously. And then you can have, uh, you can fetch the data. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, add it to the uh, doc config, so it will transform the data into uh, into what it requires. Um, we can run this one. For instance, let's go to an opportunity, and then we can uh, via the butter inspector we can easily um, okay. Let's go to the record. We can easily check out the data that comes out. This is perfect for debugging, for instance. Well, I'm going to say here my column. You see, I have a lot of uh, examples right here. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'm Dutch speaking, so I'm going to use the Dutch one uh, locale here that is required. And if I now click view, it will show me the uh, information that I've computed. So the columns, uh, exactly as I want them, is going to say when, day, night, weekend. So that's the three uh, possible values I have here over all the items. Yeah. And then next up, the rows. These rows will, of course, say, well, that is a, a record for uh, January. It has 10, 12. So it means that day is going to be 10, tw uh, night is going to be 12. Is that correct? Yeah, day is 10, night is 12. Everything seems to be fine, uh, looking very good. So what I can do now is let's run this. So I have now columns, I have rows, and as you can see here from the configuration, it will actually create my columns dynamically, and it will create my rows also dynamically. If I change some information, let's say that the uh, January day, I'm going to put that into 15. Uh, I can just do that right here. Uh, January day, it's not 10, but it's going to be 15, for instance, uh, just to prove that it actually works in real time. Okay, if the, it's safe now, and if I regenerate this, uh, this document, it's going to say 15, as you would see here. 
So if I would, for instance, remove the weekend, can I remove the weekend here at the end? Is that uh, hard? No, nope, that's not going to be hard to do. Just going to remove this. Okay, I'm going to save it again. And then I'm going to regenerate while it's saving. I can already close this one. Okay, saving is done. If I now create it, it's going to say two records, obviously, because there are only two records over here. There is no weekend anymore. So, yeah, that's how you can create complex data, take complex data, convert it into, uh, doc uh, into data sources for PDF, but via a before actionable.